<clears throat> the pub is open. Yay. Fire. Episode 140. That's a lot. That's um 128 more than Harry and Megan did. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah, for no money. This is for free, yeah. except people bring me nice little presents and mail me stuff. I got these St. Louis golf balls backstage in Vegas. Nice. Yeah, I can't wait to go smack one around. Speaking of quiet, I was in the house. Well, hold on. I'm going to tell you who sent that first. It's it, it looks like it says Andrea, but I'm not really sure. First time seeing me in person. Nice. Um, uh, comedy helps her on a bad day. He, she. I think it says Andrea. I can't really. It's hard. And it didn't say on the outside because it came backstage. So they were very excited to see me, uh, she, he, whomever it was. And Vegas, the show was great. Um, people were fired up. The Mirage is still going strong. Nice. Um, and may or may not have secretly got to go to Adele on Friday. <laughs> Termites, listen to me. Now, they were expensive. Certainly not as much as Queen Tay Tay. <laughs> Uh, they were expensive, but not like that. Yeah. Not like that. Every person I know that has a normal job is selling other children to take one child to Taylor <laughs> Swift. Like, we're going to have to sacrifice three of you so Princess could go see, or Prince or whomever. Um, so Vegas was a blast. And I think, I, I think I'll be going back in January and then another date and so on. So Do what? Volcano. Volcano's still erupting. Yep, um, gambled, played my video poker. Fun. Yep, didn't really win on that. Got my ass handed to me there and Harris. But I met some very nice termites at Harris. I was just sitting there playing <laughs> video poker. <laughs> video poker. And I, could think, I think I ordered a beer or something. And the guy goes, I think he heard my voice. And he was like, oh, my God, are you counting? And I go, yep, you found me. <laughs> right here where I said I would be at a video poker bar. Somewhere. Yeah, um, somewhere in Las Vegas. And it was very, uh, the it was beautiful one day, and then it went to Vegas hot. Like, I can't go out there hot. Like, no. I sat by the pool. Mm -hmm. Well, who's kidding who? I don't sit by the pool. I sit at the bar that's hidden in the jungle of the pool, <laughs> at the Mirage <laughs> Pool. They have a bar that's way in the back, and yeah. it feels like you're in Hawaii. It's got all these jungle plants, and it's shady. That's all I needed. And then I can sit out there and have one beer. So that was a blast. What And Adele was worth it. So if you can get last minute tickets, say anywhere from the five, I know this is a lot, 500, mm -hmm. but look at Tate Taser, like a thousand. Yeah. It's yeah. all gone crazy. I don't know where all the money's coming from. I, I don't have any idea, but um, I don't know why you didn't call me. if you can <laughs> get tickets, Adele's show is worth it. I, yeah. I mean, maybe Tate Tay tops this. Adele's inside though at a 4,500 seater. So it's a little different and it's at the Coliseum and uh, Caesars. Um, just for the record, too, I went down to the Tropicana because I wanted to take a video of the ceiling before they wreck it. Awesome Rich Little has a show five nights a week at the Tropicana. Rich fucking Little. I Googled it. He's 84. Oh, my God. Yeah. Wow. His last impression was Nixon. That's the last guy he did. He nailed it, too. He really nailed it. I mean, it's just unbelievable. But um, the TV screens, the LED screens at the Adele thing, I've never seen screens that big in my life. Maybe Tay-Tay's will be bigger. Because she's outside in some giant, you know, stadium deal. But I've it was it was worth. I don't think she should have canceled that first time. I think that was mean because people were already in flight. Mm -hmm. You can't do that to people. Right. And Adele, of all people, we don't need you to dance and shit. No. Your voice is so good, you could just stand there and sing. Yes. She should have done that. I think that was a mistake. I don't think it was nice to the fans. But I am a whore and got over that and went to her <laughs> show anyway. <laughs> It's just, just random. My phone said tickets available. <laughs> I was going to go see Carrot Top yeah. just as my friend. But I always go see his show, too, because it's always funny. Yeah. And he always has new stuff. <laughs> and uh, I was like, I was just about to text him. Scott, his real name, Scott. Scott, I'm coming down there, blah, blah, blah. Save me a seat. And then I'm like, nope. I just sold him down the river for Adele. <laughs> Too bad, Scotty. I'll see you some other time. Uh, yeah, I know your phone number. I know I don't know Adele's. I know how to get a hold of you if I want to come see you. Maybe I'll just come to your little alligator lake in Florida, Scotty. <laughs> Did you get a t-shirt gun? <laughs> oh, Adele has a t-shirt gun, and I'm going to get one. I just don't want to spend the money. They're expensive. The good ones are like five grand. Stop. I'm serious. I no. went on Amazon. Oh, my God. 
I could get a weak one, but it won't reach upper balconies. It'll hit the front row of the face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to hit somebody super hard in row three. <laughs> Bam! No, I want one. They look so much fun. I, I, that's all I would end up doing, though. Because I have an addictive personality, and I'd be like, so what if I shot the gun for 55 minutes? They liked it. Right. <laughs> That's the last thing I need, but I am going to look into it. There's got to be one cheaper than $5,000. Well, you're trying to get like a stadium. No, hers, I need mine to go 2,500 seats. Hers was 4,500 <laughs> seats, so my gun should be $2,500, half of the price of hers. <laughs> That's how I view that. It should be half as powerful because it only, <laughs> at the very most, St. Louis is 3,000. Some of the places, Chicago Theater, 3,000 uh, seats, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, we started GoFundMe. Yeah. yeah. No, we don't need it. I, I am. I, I'll figure out where to get the money. What else did you do? <laughs> My friend Bronson came with his friend Gibby, mm -hmm. and we, um, we had a, a couple day drinks. It was super fun. Nice. We went, I, I actually drank a Bud Light at a drag show, and so far, nothing weird has happened to me. <laughs> So far, I'm okay. We went to Senior Frogs. They have the best drag brunch Stop. in Vegas. Yeah. It's 11 o'clock in the morning, and you pay your ticket price. That just comes. It, there's a well in your table of ice with champagne and orange juice. Stop. Make your own mimosas. Oh and then if you want shit from the bar, you paid, like, not much. Like, there's an extra added fee for 20 bucks or something, and then you can have anything you want. Like, if you want beer or uh, real That's drinks or whatever. Yeah. Well, there's food back there, too. I, I don't know. I wasn't hungry or whatever, but... Um, it, yeah, it's so fun. It's like an hour and 15 minutes. Cool. It's a wake her up there though. It, yeah. That'll wake your ass up at 11 o'clock. Cause yeah. those, everybody there is fired up. Yeah. A lot of bachelorette <laughs> parties, a lot of woo at 11 AM. I'm like, Oh, maybe I should have went to the one. This one's a little early for me, but, um, it was super fun. So there's a little Vegas tip for you. Wear senior frogs. You would not think that wear a senior frogs. treasure Island. So if you're looking for something fun to do in the daytime, yeah, what is that? It's actually called, it's not, RuPaul's is over at Harris. This one just says drag brunch. I don't think it has a, it's a RuPaul drag brunch. it is a RuPaul one? Yeah. Well, RuPaul wasn't there, I know that, so um, don't expect RuPaul to be there. I would Google that. It's the, it's the queens of drag race. The RuPaul. queens of drag race. Oh, RuPaul's drag race. RuPaul's drag race. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, good. I know in some conservative circles, people may think that something bad will happen to you if you do that. Nope. You'll, you'll totally fine. fine. Yeah. One other travel note. If you're going to Vegas, I left Sunday morning on the 6 a.m. flight. Oh, Sit. God. It's disgusting, I know. But I had to get back to go again. Uh, and I have all the fast passes. I have yeah. clear. I have TSA pre-check. Anything you can do to make it faster, I've already signed up. The, I would say half the people in the airport were not going to make their flight. What? I have never seen such a mess and then in my brain, I just get angry at Poot Pete Buttigieg because you're the Secretary <laughs> of Transportation, and how come nobody is in here going, what the hell is going on here? Right. Who's in charge? Mm -hmm. You're going to get fined if you don't figure this shit out. Right. I mean, I went with plenty of time. I always do. I'm, I'm not to my parents' level where I arrive five hours early, <laughs> but I am there at least an eh, hour 45 before my flight, always. Yep. And I barely made it to the plane. What? Yeah. And I had pre-check, and uh, the Zoom passed through everything. Mm -hmm. It. I'm just saying, if you're leaving Vegas, I thought, well, the 6 a.m. flight, the 6 o'clock flights won't be that full, and then people get drunk and forget to go to the airport. Uh, no. There were a million people. It was chaos. I just don't. Then if you don't make your flight, there's no room on the other flights because there's no inventory. Wow. Right. I'd be, I don't understand why Pete's not yelling at the airlines. You guys got your PPP money. What? Yeah. Where are the flights? Right. Then I almost got stuck in Atlanta because of thunderstorms, <laughs> and then all those flights were sold out to get to Nashville. So if my flight didn't go, my friend Dax is stuck in Orlando or Philly now because there's storms everywhere. They told him, sorry, your flight's canceled. The next one's tomorrow at 4. <laughs> what? what? That's not an acceptable answer. No. Remember in the old days, they'd say, well... There's no more flights on airlines, but here, we're going to put you on, and then they would offer that. you got to fight for that now. It's just become, I may go back to the bus. I did that when I was a young comic. The bus? How um, much a comedian, Ron, and he loves it in the East Coast. He said it's a, it's a dollar? Oh, not a tour bus. No, the real bus. Oh, my God. Well, Wi-Fi's free. I, you're not doing that. 
Well, and I can't go on trains. Pete doesn't have a handle on those either. They're no. crashing and falling shit's in falling it off bridges into rivers and <laughs> contaminating things. Like I don't know, Mer- America, America, <laughs> as George Bush would say, America, let's get our shit together. Huh? <laughs> of I'm drinking a Topo Chico because Dax and his wife um, loved hanging lemon lime. Yeah. So on their behalf, I'm having... They do love all. Who's kidding? Who they like them all? I like them all except black cherry. I can't stand it, and don't I don't want those ones that taste like weeds. Like watermelon. here's watermelon. It is like grass. There's a couple of them that taste like grass. What do you like? Ruby grapefruit. Love it. Tastes like grapefruit. Lime. Fine. Tastes like lime. It's when they start to get off the path, and then it's just grass. Mango. No. <laughs> No, that tastes like rotten fruit. It no, 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 no. Okay. All right, moving on. Here I'm gonna try these. Old El Paso Fiesta Twist with a ranch flavor. Nice. Zesty ranch. Wow. Seems like there's a lot. I've never been a twist person. They're too puffy. No. It was a Cheeto twist. No, these don't taste. Like ranch. No. no, I'm sorry, El Paso. I know you were established in 1938 as a brand, and I like some of your stuff, and I like the little cactuses on the thing, but the, I'm going to vote. The, these are a miss. These are a fire and a miss. Boom. Now, the Mirage has a California pizza kitchen in it, and I love California pizza kitchen. Um, I'm not a barbecue uh, dressing person, but they have barbecued ranch dressing. I didn't know that when I was there. I wouldn't have gotten it anyway. I like their house dressing, but let's see. No. Oh, my God, no. No. No, too sweet. Too sweet. What is that? Holy shit, it's supposed to have 7,000 calories in it. God damn. Oh, no. My mistake, and it's one of my favorite foods. Sodium. 310 milligrams of sodium. Fat grams, nine. It's probably like in a teaspoon. No, it's two teaspoons. Gross. Tablespoons. I don't know. How many milliliters? Uh, <laughs> I don't know milliliter. It's 30. It says it right there. Yeah, well, you, don't, yeah. you don't know. Um, a few other things from termites. This lady sent me a beagle sticker just f- for no reason. Okay. Yeah, Vicky. Cool. Yeah, well, spells it like Vicky Carr, V-I-K-K-I. If you don't know who that is, look her up. I follow her on Instagram. She's still alive, in case you were wondering. You don't have to say you love me. Just be close at hand. Yeah, it's very weird. I opened for her once. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. You opened for Vicky Carr? I did. I opened for Vicky Carr in Atlantic City. My My mom and dad flew in because it was my mom's favorite singer. And um, (laughs) this this total, like, uh, Jersey, something out of Goodfellas, this guy started heckling her. Mm -hmm. And he goes... Sing something in English. Because she, she only sang one song in Spanish, and she right. is Mexican. I mean, she has yeah. the right to do that. But she was in the middle of the other song. Uh, uh, I love you, baby, and if it's quite all right. And then he started yelling shit, and she goes, throw him out. I love you, baby. <laughs> she didn't stop walking. She didn't look at him. She just said, throw him out. And, I mean, I'm like t- 26 years old. I've never seen anything like any of this. And all of a sudden, these giant Vegas, uh, Atlantic City, East Coast bouncer guys came, literally hoisted him up like he was in a, a, in a throne mm-hmm. and just threw him into the casino. Wow. Bye. Yeah. So thank you, Vicky, for my Beagle sticker. I like it a lot. That's amazing. Yes. I was invited to Morgan and Joshua's wedding. Well, it's kind of cool because it's. A, I, I like any reason to go to Kansas City for barbecue. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know what the I, I don't know I, what the place is. They've mentioned it, but I can't attend. But I, I will send a gift. Nice. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> I think it's funny they invited me. <laughs> <laughs> They've listened to every single podcast. Um, uh, yeah. I don't know. I got an address though. When are they getting married? Uh, September second. I probably have a show. Oh. It's a, probably on a weekend. Nobody ever accommodates my wishes. Can we have can we have all weddings on Mondays? <laughs> I would love to be there. Really. Also baptisms. Um if you could do everything on Mondays, then comedians could come. Yep. Otherwise we can't come. Um 
This is a Bigfoot fan. Last thing. And then we're going to get to some queen news that's unbelievable. <laughs> um, this is a Bigfoot shirt. This is from Sandy and Dave in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. Um, so it's Bigfoot with a fish. I don't know why it makes me laugh. I thought that was funny. Yeah. It's a shark. No, it's not a shark. It's just a fish. Like, it's a trout. He lives up north. He lives up north. We all know that. No, we don't. Oklahoma's got sightings. <laughs> well, yes, Oklahoma does have sightings. Yeah. They have their own. Missouri has our own, too. It's called Momo, Missouri Monster. I know. Yeah. It's not really a Bigfoot. It's more like an ape. I don't know. It's a combo. It's not as defined as the one up in the Northwest. Okay. Google it. I already did. Momo, Missouri Monster. No, I didn't. Not, no, I didn't. Not you, Missouri. Well, maybe Missouri did. All right, moving on. Queen News. Boom. I don't know why this means. God, I feel so sorry for every parent that's trying to somehow find money. Um, my friend Dory, though, told her kid, I ain't paying for that. And she, <laughs> in Philly, and the girl went down, and all the girls were outside, and they had a blast. They never even got to go in. I saw that on Instagram. Yeah, but in Nashville, they all went to the pedestrian bridge here, and you can see inside the stadium, Perfect. so they could see the, it. yeah, and they still like being down there, I guess, or so the kids said they had fun. Yeah. Okay, they're, these are Taylor Swift fans, and they're reporting that they have amnesia following her show. What? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you've paid hundreds of dollars for a ticket and braved the pouring rain to watch, watch your favorite artist perform in what should be an unforgettable evening, but three hours and over 40 songs later, you get home and realize you can't remember a thing. What? Now, I can say that about a few concerts, but I know exactly what to blame on. <laughs> And it was called overstimulation and th a thousand beers. Or maybe I went and got a jug of wine. I'm sick of, I'm sick of beer. Even at the Adele thing, I said, can I have a thing, a, a glass of Pinot Noir? Six, eight or 16 ounces. I'm like, whoa, 16 in a plastic cup. Um, Hot wine. Uh, it sounds it's almost unbelievable, but many Taylor Swift fans are claiming to have post-concert amnesia. Psychologists say emotions and time may be behind the phenomenon. This is a lot of kids are saying this. Okay. But also 40 songs, like 40 songs. That's a lot. Yeah. I can't, I can't not imagine. From out-of-body experiences to entering a dreamlike state, Swift fans, or Swifties as they prefer to be known, have taken to social media in recent days to reveal their guilt at not being able to remember key moments from the Eras tour. I think that's a hard name to say, Eras. I still would name it, I'm your economy. <laughs> I am an economy. <laughs> Let me change your economy for a weekend. <laughs> Amnesia can be quite a serious system. S a symptom is referring to the loss of memories, experiences, and information. But Dr. Michelle Phillips, a senior lecturer in, the music, psychology, in music psychology from the Royal Northern College of Music, says the idea of post-concert amnesia is not as scary as it sounds. It will really be the case that fans have no memory at all of being at the concert. In fact... It's likely to be one of the things they remember for attending for the rest of their lives. However, it's simply that they encode some aspects of the event in memory and not others. Well, I can tell you even from being at Adele, mm -hmm. there's too many things from my, my memory. You got to take pictures of all that shit in your brain. Mm -hmm. You're screen shooting everything with your eyeballs. Mm -hmm. Adele, half the time I'm looking at these giant ass screens, then I'm looking at her. That's why I don't like big screens. Yeah. But I also am not in front of these amount of people where you have to have them. Right. But if they want to do it in a 1,200 seat room, no. Right. You you're, keep the focus where it's supposed to be, right, right there on that five foot tall thing down there talking. Me, you don't. We don't need all that in a big room. Yes, yes. or if seats are kind of sideways, that's not fair. Um, but anyway, um, the 40 songs you won't. Yeah, there's gonna be all kinds of shit. I would think you wouldn't remember. Right. The old saying "time flies when you're having fun" is an easy way to think about the post concert amnesia. According to Dr. Phillips, when fans are excited and so immersed in a moment, they can feel as though time has suddenly passed and they haven't been able to properly process everything they've just seen, heard, and felt. I also felt like that during every math class I ever attended. Because <laughs> all I would do is think about other shit, and then I'd be like, are they done talking? Are they all done talking? Are we out of here? That's, yeah, I will not remember a thing that was said in this place. Nope. Nope. Gone are the days when musicians perform on an empty stage with just their microphones and instrument. The day, these days, the fans are treated to mind-blowing spectacles, strobe lights, massive props, more costume changes you can keep track of, so it's no surprise you're not going to remember everything you've experienced after having to process so much. 
she says concert goers how she says most concerts she goes to have an element of surprise all the time as well as an intensive light movement and fireworks which she thinks kind of cause memory loss wow mm. fireworks adele's stage on purpose catches on fire and the piano catches on fire and all i can think of is michael jackson and the pepsi con concert and burnt oh, half his head off right. and i just i don't like pyrotechnics I, no. I and i love fire more than anything buddy outside burn piles I saw your, love it I saw your video. but inside i don't i just i think something could go wrong too easily um anyway uh, this one girl said she could tell her friends she, she could remember one or two moments from the concert, but she can't re uh, recollect the whole set because it's just hazy. Um, some people have more memories than others. Some are worried about have w worried about having forgotten bits of the show. Listening to the set again just might make all those memories come flood flooding back. <laughs> well, there you go. Go back to your house and see if you can play Tay Tay's all of her songs and see if you can remember the whole night. I know there's, even when I haven't drank or anything, there's all kinds of shit in concerts I don't remember. I think we should try to go. To go to Tay Tay? I think we should try to find a place and go. All right. Well, I may, <gasps> I may already have a plan for that. What? I may. Oh. I feel like I'm a waste of a ticket, though. Not if you're going with me. <laughs> Am I involved in the plan? What if I was going with my friends Bob and Clark? What? <laughs> what if I got you a ticket, too? What if I got you a ticket and not me a ticket? I'm a waste of a ticket. Here's all I know. Me, me, I'm the problem, it's me. <laughs> For the amount of the money these cost, I could go to Stevie Nicks five times. And I would be happier. Yep. Well, Did you really do that? I can't tell you right now. Well, I can't focus then. Well, you're just not going to be able to focus for a while. <laughs> Dumb shit. <laughs> Update! Wow. Yep. Wait, I forgot my... Oh, it's in my news. We have a trader update. Who cares? I care! <laughs> These people should not get away with this. This is my Irish grudge bullshit. You are not getting away with this. I will haunt you down. I will follow you down to the sound of my voice haunts you. Thank you, Stevie Nicks. That's what I would do with these trader people. A uh, Donald Trump supporter who drove a stun gun into the neck of a D.C. police officer who was abducted by the mob during the January 6th attack after being, he, uh, he, he shouted, Trump won. He was, he, well, guess what you got for that? Twelve and a half years in prison. Oh, my God. Yep. Wow. His name's, name's Daniel D.J. Rodriguez, a California man who traveled to D.C. with fellow Trump supporters who belonged to a telegram group called the Patriot. What is a telegram group? Do they not know how to get on the facial book? I'm sure it's not on the internet. Um, Patriots 45 MAGA Gang. That's what they were called, his group. Pleaded guilty in February to felony conspiracy, is uh, obstruction of official proceeding, tampering with documents or proceedings, and inflicting bodily injury on officers using a de deadly or dangerous we weapon. Oh, wow, he wrote, there will be blood. He wrote on a telegram chat. What the hell is it? It's a, it's a chat room. It's, it's a, a chat, chat room? room. Mm -hmm. Telegram? Never yeah. heard of it. Yeah. Um, before he went, and then he said, welcome to the revolution. Well, I hope it was worth it, Daniel. Most of them uh, starve on Facebook. Um, then he wrote on there, oh, my God. Who writes this? This is how dumb these people are. <laughs> he wrote this online. Oh, my God, I did so much fucking shit right now and got away. Tased the F out of the blue, meaning a cop. Right. No, a lot of them were not the smartest. That is for sure. You don't tape yourself, videotape. No. You don't write crap online. Update! <laughs> <laughs> wow, the, I just got distracted by the wind. I think there's a tornado coming. Okay, Bed, Bed Bath & Beyond. Yay! Guess what a lot of them are going to be. What? Bed Bath & Beyonds, because they're going yeah. on, so we have the empty space. Right. Well, I was saying um, a bar... Pickleball. Pickleball? The old people are d dominating. Wow. Oh, my God. You can't even get a time at my parents' place in Florida for p pickleball. Wow. People are outraged. There's not enough courts. <laughs> They're going to have a giant assessment to every condo owner. <laughs> we want no pickleball court. 
Well, well I want to learn how to play too. It's not just totally old people. My brother plays. He's younger than me. Pickleball is coming to your local mall. Replacing shuttered Bed Bath & Beyond, Old Navy, and Saks Off Fifth stores. Oh. That's great. Yes. Because especially in the winter, in the colder states, um, like my mom and dad are always looking for something to do inside. Uh-huh. That'll be great. Yeah. Um, it streams like it may seem like a strange strategy, but the match offers benefits to both mall owners and pickleball players. And it'll be full. Every day. Yeah. Then you put out other things that old people might want to buy. Mm-hmm. When they're done playing their pickleball, maybe my mom would like to shop for a pickleball outfit. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, this is, a, this is a great idea. Um, it's America's fastest growing sport. But, you know, I see it on TV when ESPN and ESPN2 have nothing else to... I just don't see it going pro. I know they have pro teams and people are investing, but... Tom Brady, Drew Brees, but yeah, yeah. I don't think anybody's going to get into it enough. Um, It began in 1965. I'm as old as a sport. (laughs) (laughs) The number of people playing pickleball grew by 159% over three years to 8.9 million. Yeah, and you know what? All these, um, like, parks and country clubs and shit that have tennis courts... Uh Everyone immediately wants, and it's not that hard to transform them. You just draw different lines. Right. I think the net might be a little shorter. I don't know. I don't know Probably. either. Um, we could make it up. Oh, a lot of uh, um, tennis players. The tennis players are pissed. I know that at my mom and dad's place anyway. And neighbors are bothered by the pop, pop, pop noise of the pickleball and have blocked the development of courts. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I can't imagine, well, I can't imagine if it started at like 6 a.m. and I, I flew home on a Monday or Sunday I and I want to sleep because my day off is Monday. Yeah. Huh. Well, and I hear it. Like ping pong? Is that what sounds like? Harder. Oh, God. Noisier. Ugh. Mm-hmm. Terrible. So that's our Bed Bath & Beyond, see? It's not all a bad story. It's not a sad ending, Bob and Clark. You listen <laughs> to me out there? Why don't you two learn how to play some pickleball? Huh? When you go to Palm Springs on weekends? I'm sure there's lots of pickleball leagues <laughs> in Palm Springs. Um, holy shit, they found it. This is a crazy story. Okay. And don't think I didn't go down this rabbit hole and work my ass off, and I still can't find the answer. Okay. This is where I get mad at modern journalism as a person who ju- graduated from journalism school. I don't like it when the story is not really complete. It's lazy. But here's what I got. That's what these podcasts are for, yeah. but then half the time I can't find it, and then I just give up. But what am I supposed to do? Go go to someone's home? I mean, I did everything I could. Uh, so the painter Ruben, mm-hmm. also could be called Rubens, Rubens. but Rubens in the Midwest, he'd be Rubens. <laughs> like two sandwiches. Yeah. Rubens. Rubens. Ruben, painting lost to history and misidentified for almost 300 years, has reemerged with the help of an X-ray a- analysis and could now fetch up to $7.7 million at auction, ne- auction next month. Flemish painter Peter Paul Rubin completed the name of the painting as St. Sebastian Tended by Two Angels. And boy, it is... St. Sebastian's got arrows all sticking through him. It's one of one where you have the fat, chubby angels, oh, yeah. the kind I like, yeah. the cherub-like the angels. Happy, the happy ones. Yeah, they're happy. They always have curly hair. They're flying around, pulling <laughs> arrows out of people. Um... He painted this painting more than 400 years ago. His brush strokes depict the story of Roman soldier Sebastian, pierced by soldiers' arrows and left to die after he converted to Christianity before angels miraculously intervene. Uh, this is the craziness of it. Likely commissioned by an Italian nobleman and military commander, Ambrigo Spinola, the painting was believed to have been completed in 1606 through 1608. They're not sure. Or six in Italy or around 1609 and 10 in Antwerp, once um, he had returned to his hometown. Uh, this guy was a fighter, the guy who commissioned it. He was a devout Catholic, and that's why you have the choice of the, choice of the saint. Um, and da, da, da. The Spinola family were great patrons and friends of Rubin, so that's how he got him to do it. Okay. The painting disappeared. Now, remember, we think it was in either Antwerp or Italy. Right. The painting disappeared from recorded history in the 1730s, as it passed out of the family and through the female line of descent until it reappeared in Missouri. What? What? In 1963. <laughs> and I googled Stop. 
everything you can Google. What town in Missouri was housing <laughs> the Ruban painting? Like, was it this is lazy because it just they just say Missouri. Like I would say, well, it was found in Canada. Right. Well, where? Right. I mean, this is unbelievable. Who had it? Probably. It said it was a later. It was later acquired by the current owner at an auction in 2008, where it was misidentified. Wasn't even identified. Leave it up to my state to go. I don't know. Fuck. It looks like yeah. It could, yeah. About an angel. It was misidentified as a painting by Laurent de la Hire, a French artist. Wow. Yeah, but now how do you not sue for this? X-ray an analysis carried out in April revealed that the painting was the work of Ruben, and more more importantly, the original version of the composition. Previously, the title had been held by a painting in the Corsini family collection, now hanging somewhere in Rome. But they auctioned it off. I bet a bush. You think what? A bush. Bush. Oh, one of the, because of the Money. the Bush family connections. Yeah. Well, it was her Barbara Bush's family from Missouri, the Walkers. I'm talking about the Becker Bush. Oh, you're talking about the Anheuser Bushes. The Augie Bushes. Yeah. Ah, he wasn't an art guy. He built. He Anheuser Bush built. If you ever go to um, St. Louis, you have to go. It's called Grant's Farm. Mm -hmm. He married a German girl named Trudy. And he was already a multimillionaire at this point, almost probably even more than that by today's standards. And she really missed Germany and started to cry. Mm -hmm. She wanted to go home. Yep. And he said, nay, nay, as John <laughs> Panette would say, well, we are going home, but I can't have you crying, sitting around crying Monday through Friday. <laughs> so he recreated Germany what? in this area of St. Louis. There's a giant, like, Bavarian mansion. This is where hit, this kind of art wouldn't have gone. He wanted, like, hunting, lodge, feel, mm -hmm. German. Uh, there's a giant, giant beer garden. Wow. And if you go there to this day, you get to taste all Anheuser Bush products are free. And I, I don't know why it makes me laugh every time I walk up and go, could I taste Budweiser? Like, <laughs> look up my age. Do you think I've really never tasted a Budweiser? And then I go back up and go, how about Bud Light? And you know what I've never had? A Michelob Ultra. <laughs> Grant's Farm, and there's a it's a petting zoo for little kids. Well, really, it's a petting zoo for me, because um, <laughs> I love it. There's to take the kids. I get to drink for free. There's goats everywhere. There's like one camel. They have like one of some things, but camels. it's mostly goats and camels are native. Well, there's a lot of camels in Germany, so I've seen on um, nowhere. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think that those bushes would have had the money for that. It was passed down in some family line, and the bushes aren't from Antwerp, and they're not from Italy. We need to think of an Italian family. Mm -hmm. One train ride, you got a big painting. Boom. Holy shit, they found it. Moving on. The bushes. This is crazy. An ancient Maya city discovered in Mexican jungle. A previously unknown ancient Maya city has been discovered in the jungles of southern Mexico, the country's anthropology institute said on Tuesday, adding it's likely an important, it was likely an important center more than a thousand years ago. The city includes large pyramid-like buildings, stone columns, three plazas, and imposing buildings and other structures arranged in an almost concentric circles. They've named it Achmanton, meaning stone column. I'm sure I said that wrong. Don't email me. <laughs> Uh, it's located um, <laughs> at an ecological reserve in the country's Yucatan Peninsula and was discovered during a search of largely unexplored stretch of jungle larger than Luxembourg. Oh, my God. We still have jungles that big that are unexplored. Wow. The search took place, took place between March and June using aerial laser mapping. Cool. Nice. Yeah, it's, there's still stuff there. Oh. The, Maya, the Maya civilization, known for its advanced mathematical calendars, span... Southeast Mexico and, and through parts of Central America, widespread political collapse led to its decline centuries before the arrival of Spanish conquistadors whose military campaigns saw the last stronghold fall in the late 17th century. Wow. Now, how long before people can... And it's, speaking of people going here, like that probably is safe. I get that. Um, like going to Machu Picchu or something. The, could we just to backtrack for the, the Titan submersible, submersible yeah. thing? There, turns out this guy... Uh, the the captain of it, or what are you? What you call? CEO. The CEO, but he was in the thing. Mm -hmm. He was texting. He was 
purposely going after rich people to try to get them to go down in this because so many people had said no. One guy sent a deposit and then heard all this crap. Yeah, I think he saw the 60 Minutes deal that the end went, ooh, yeah, I don't know about this. He bailed. I don't know if you get your deposit back. Um, but he was texting people. He lowered the price from two fifty to one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Now, what if you're one of the first chumps who paid the two hundred fifty grand? I'd go. If, it's like when you're on an airplane, and some people bought their tickets on Travelocity. Right. Some people went to the website. You, you could be in the same row on the same flight and have paid way different amounts. You paid how much? Yeah, what? That's bullshit, man. What do you mean you got an eighty dollar ticket to Hawaii? <laughs> what? Huh? <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I've seen more videos of him saying, I broke all the rules. I don't care. Right. I think uh, any lawyer will tell you a, a writer and a, signing a disclaimer and a permission slip, basically. Mm -hmm. It doesn't hold true if there's gross negligence, and I do not think it will be any problem to prove that this was gross negligence on his point part. And then I saw a super like crazy thing so this one guy who seems super duper smart, he's super duper old, uh, but he said you. He said the basis of his design was going to cause problems, but because he mixed three materials together, meaning the plexiglass for the portal, and then the um, titanium, and then he used something else. So whenever you're going to connect those, every seal is another potential problem, right. which is why submarines have no windows. That was a hard science. Yeah. yeah. Good job. Um, I, yeah, it was, well, there, I saw a bunch of stuff, but I, I just think that man, and you know, they say these people are explorers. I, are explorers and pioneers. That was one of the things I read. That is an insult to actual pioneers who got in a covered wagon and fought animals, bears, and God knows what, and, and then now there, there's Indians out there. A, a pioneer, even an explorer, a uh, certain Edmund Hillary, he walked to the top of Mount Everest because he wanted to. Right. Period. That's the only reason. Yeah, I give it. That guy's an explorer for sure. These are rich people who paid to get in a boat and go down to the bottom and look at a thing. Yeah. That's not. No. I would call you a tourist. Right. You're not. Right. Even the space people have to go through a bunch of training yeah. to do it. I still don't know that you're just because you're willing to die doesn't mean you're an explorer. <laughs> I don't think, or a pioneer. When I think of what the people, the pioneer people had to do, it means you're more. well, I could, I would have killed if I was a pioneer wife and my husband said we're leaving like Virginia mm -hmm. or North Carolina. By the time we got to, I don't know, Iowa yep. or North Dakota, I would, I would have murdered him and would have said, you know what, God damn it, there was nothing wrong with Virginia. I told you that. I wanted to stay. Then we got to Ohio, and you're like, let's keep going, honey. Well, here we are. I mean, how, I would. that's why I think there's people in Nebraska and Missouri, because those women just said, nope, yeah. I'm not going one mile further. I can't believe we've lived this long. Nope. If you're by the Mississippi, at least you're by a river. I love Des Moines. <laughs> Des Moines fine. They have the uh, the river. There's what is that river up there? I think called the De Pair, like River De Pair, the Fathers, something about monks. Anyway, uh, holy shit, they found it. This is a good one too. It was a very exciting finding week. <laughs> now I mentioned this before, but I didn't really understand the whole full story. Turkish man knocked down basement wall to find a two thousand year old underground city. What? And you know why he? he what? Yeah, and here's why he. He, cha he was chasing chickens through a hole, his, his own chickens. He was chasing them, oh, a hole in the wall. Okay. A Turkish homeowner chasing chickens through a hole in his basement. In his basement, why are there chickens in your basement, sir? Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. During renovations, came across an abandoned underground Turkish city that once housed 20,000 people. What? Imagine that. <laughs> in an effort to recapt recapture his escaping <laughs> poultry, the unidentified man knocked down the wall in the, in the 1960s to re reveal a dark tunnel leading to the ancient city of Elengubo, today known as Darren Kiyu. Uh, it, this city was burrowed more than 280 feet beneath the central region of something. It's the largest evacuated underground city in the world. It is believed to connect more than 200 smaller separate underground cities that were discovered in recent decades. This is, Turkey's opening all this up. That's why it's a story now. 
inside the subterranean city whose entrances connected more than 600 private homes. Who wants to live underground? Unless we're hiding from somebody, I don't get what we're doing. They found 18 levels of tunneling containing dwellings, dry food storage, cattle stables, schools, wineries, even a chapel. (laughs) The city was also equipped with a ventilation system that supplied its residents with fresh air and water. Jesus, how smart were these people? Life underground was probably difficult. The residents believed relieved themselves in seal clay jars. So there's no toilets. Lived by torchlight and disposed of dead bodies in designated areas. The exact date the impressive city built remains contested, but ancients writing back, they write back to 370 BC. Back then, the city was likely used to store goods, but then was used as a bunker to escape from foreign invaders. The dimly lit hallways were intentionally built narrow, so low, so intruders would be forced to stoop and enter in single file. Oh, that's pretty Ooh, smart. Yeah. The doors connecting each level were blocked by half-ton boulders, only movable from the inside. Yeah, but you've also locked, then you've bouldered yourself in. Right. Anytime you make a gate, you're keeping somebody out, but you're keeping you in. I remember that. <laughs> Say that again. I've always thought that. Anytime you make a gate or build a fence, yes, you might be keeping someone out, but you're also keeping yourself in. Oh, very insightful. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm only a big fan of a fence if it's like in a Western movie where it's like a stable fence for stables. <laughs> and I had to buy one for this house. I guess my parents, I don't know. I thought fences were, you, your dad built them. And then I had to go pay for it, and they were, and it was not that big at all. It just had to because I said I want a pool, and then they're like, well, insurance wise, you gotta have a fence. Right. It's like seventy five hundred dollars. I'm like, what? My dad. I'm calling my dad. Yeah, this is ridiculous. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe um, I'm gonna build my fence. They think people in the Bronze Age built it, but I mean, it's just crazy. You could go chase a chicken, and then you find all this. It was abandoned in 1923. All the way till then, it lasted. God. Yeah. Uh, w- one century after it was rediscovered, in ni- and then, the ancient city was open to visitors curious to experience life underground, which was, oh, it was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List in 1985. I wonder if you can go. Wow. Yeah. I no wonder his chickens liked it. No kidding. That, of, of course where the okay. chickens loved it. There's just t- 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 so much room to roam. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, we're going underground. You're never going to see me again. Bye, bye. Um, Gen Z, where are my children? We got a little bit of trouble. Really? Yeah. They did a giant study. Gen Zers are the worst tippers. What? They're not tipping. Now, I think some of the tipping's gotten out of hand because every machine now says, I went and got my oil changed. Would you like to leave a tip? What? When did I start doing that? But then I, I'm too Catholic, guilty, Midwest, yeah. whatever. I'm like, okay, fine, 10%. <laughs> like, I just do it. But I do, there's a lot of times where I'm like, this is not appropriate here. No. Like, there, we used to have very d- distinct things that you tip for, and now it's... An additional the, tip. They don't say that. Yeah, an additional tip yeah. to the thing you're not telling me I already left. Right. Uh, yeah, how much was already <laughs> added. But I waited tables forever and worked at a bar forever, so I'm all about tipping. But um, I guess the Gen Zers, here's the scoop on this. This is what they say. Tipping is a hot button issue and source of frustration for many Americans. But like so many issues of the moment, Gen Z has a slightly different take in response to the situation. Oh a recent survey from Bankrate, whatever Bankrate is, found that Gen Zers, or people 18 to 26 years old, are the generation least likely to tip. When, G, when Gen Z dines out, they're likely to tip the general accepted 20% of a bill, the survey found. More than half of baby boomers surveyed tip at least in 20% but only a quarter of the Gen Z- Zers do. <clears throat> I expect a lot of this has to do with Gen Zers being new to adulthood and tipping culture and not having else any as many memories of the way it used to be. Yeah, but they're probably getting burnt out on getting asked for a tip for every single thing they do. Right. I'm getting burnt out on it. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Even at, I don't know, am I supposed to tip at Starbucks? I guess. I'll do it. Hmm. But when did that kind of coffee, you know... Just strange places. Right. Just because your computer can do that doesn't mean you should. Um, Agreed. Across all generations, though. So um, the tendency to tip increases with age. 
A survey of 2,500 adults. Surveys found uh, baby boomers, that's if you're 59 to 77. Mm -hmm. Millennials, you are 27 to 42. Gen Xers, 43 to 58. Uh, they all sit, they all tip more than Gen Z. They also have a lot more money. They do. Mm -hmm. It's the children. Yeah. They don't, they don't have that much money yet. But if you, but I see a lot of them out in, so in places cool. where I'm like, they look awfully young to be affording this. Right. I think that a lot now. If I see anybody under 40 in first class, I'm like, what did you steal? Right. How did you get here? I never got to this part of the plane until I was 40. <laughs> I think the tipping out of control feeling is more common among older adults who are more accustomed to buying coffee or picking up a sandwich without a cashier flipping a payment term. Or, to, right, 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 right. I didn't even read this part. I just thought it. Well, Gen Zers, what say you, huh? <laughs> they say they're most, less likely to tip because they have lower incomes, but many young adults also seem to have, to have a social justice take on tipping. As in, it's not fair and we shouldn't be doing it. However, I'd note that tipping is a lay of the land. That, now, see, if you go to um, France, for instance, if you want to be a waiter and stuff, you have to go to school for that. Yes. Yes. Yep. And then tipping is just a bonus. Right. It's not expected because they make very good salaries. Right. All those little cafe guys that look to be 60 years old buzzing around, they're making good cash. Yeah. So if you want to tip them, go for it. Well, also, but it's not expected because they make a good – You did with servers and – Bartenders, I'm not talking about the guy who changed my oil, but um, it's an hour. right. Yeah. Here's one. Speaking of the children, this one's for you. Taco Bell to soon erupt with its volcano menu this summer. Yeah, yeah. who fire! didn't? Fire, fire, fire! Volcano burrito, volcano taco, and and the added uh, and the option to add lava sauce on any item. What's the, lava sauce? I don't know. I never ordered lava sauce. Wow. I have no idea. The product will be available first with early access for Taco Bell Rewards members on June 27th, and general availability will begin on June 29th for a limited time. Get out there, children. Your food is back. That's great. Yeah, I liked it. Um, all right. This guy. This is crazy. <laughs> What's the matter with your face? Because I can't believe someone would go through this with this. Dead man shows up at his funeral in a helicopter to teach the family important the importance of staying of touch in touch. Well, I can tell you what all the young people are going to say at the funeral. Oh, who knew Uncle Boo Boo was fucking crazy? Oh, yeah, Whatever exactly. I'll tell you his name is. I'm telling you, David. I think. Yeah. Wow. Note to self: Don't invite David to shit. Weird. <laughs> weird. Cry baby ranch. <laughs> It's no secret that even in the modern day, in the easy the age of easy communication with advanced technology, the last we, thing we do is communicate with our loved one. Days go by without us contacting our family or friends. Over a period of time, we lose touch. One man decided to give his family a wake-up call, albeit an extreme one, to make everyone realize just how important communication relationships are. According to The Independent, a Belgian man faked his own death. They never say how he did that, though. I am interested. How he... How, what... It, how... Yeah. I mean... It's harder. Anyway, and showed up at his own funeral in a helicopter, giving his grieving relatives the biggest shock of their lives. David Bairton claimed that he staged the elaborate, pr elaborate prank to teach his family, the members, family members, the value of staying in touch with one another. Hmm. Uh, cry baby ranch, David. Yeah. Send everybody a text and go, <laughs> hey, where are you little pigs at? Exactly. How come nobody's answering me? And then right. just keep bothering them. They'll answer eventually. Yeah. This is a stage funeral was held near Liege after one of Burton's daughters, wow. uh, he allegedly wrote a tribute to her father, which said, rest in peace, Daddy. I will never stop thinking about you. Why is life so, so unfair? Why you? You're going to, you were going to be a grandfather, and you still had your whole life ahead of you. I love you. We love you. We will never forget you. However, Burton's prank did not go down well with viewers, and many people accused him of being cruel. Yeah, it's not cruel. Yeah, this, this guy's from Belgium, if you're wondering where all this is happening. Oh. Yeah. Um... I don't, right uh, here, there's more. Okay. Um, yeah. He expressed um, hurt because his family members didn't invite him to anything. Well, perhaps it's for reasons like this, David. Right. Right. 
Maybe you could take a different approach rather than scaring the shit out of everyone. Hmm? Do that. Just saying. Uh, nobody sees me. We all grow apart. I felt underappreciated. That's why I wanted to give them a life lesson and show them you shouldn't wait until someone is dead to meet up with them. He was fortunate that his stunt worked. Uh, he also stated that despite the fact that only half of his family members attended his fake funeral, other relatives have contacted him since. <laughs> I would have. And here would have been my message. What the actual fuck is wrong with you? You need a therapist. <laughs> David, how much money did that set you back? This proves who really cares about me. Those who didn't come, those who didn't come, contact me to meet up, meet up. So in a way, I did win. Oh. Oh. But he also realized how much hurt he had caused to the ones who cared about him with his immature prank during his appearance on TPMP. Barton expressed regret for carrying out the stunt. He revealed that his wife was aware of his plan from the start and attempted to derail it. Um, That's awful. Right. That's the prankster awful. let his children believe he had died for a couple of days. Before telling them the truth about his action, he told the chat show that it was his film crew insisted, who insisted on only documenting the stunt if he told his children and sister he wasn't really dead. He has, however, insisted that they half knew it was a prank from the, they half knew it was a prank from the start. He said, after seeing his loved ones, after I started receiving messages from people and videos of them crying, I wish I could have canceled the whole thing, but it was too late. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Here's the main thing everybody knows. Uncle David's crazy. Right. That's what came out of that. Is that what you were shooting for? No. Um, then he asked himself, why have you done this? It was a human need to have a sense of belongingness and togetherness. Many people feel lonely. If you're one of them, we suggest you pick up that phone and call, not text, your loved one to check on them. If possible, go meet with them for a special occasion. I think David's got more problems, problems than just a fake funeral that he created. Wow. Yeah. Um, yes. Here's just a little shout out. Okay. Do you guys listen to Sirius Radio? How much is a helicopter? <laughs> he spent a lot on this. Yeah. Yeah. Hilarious. You had to get a priest or some religious person to go along with the fake funeral and shit. Right. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. This is just for country music fans. Um, special announcement, because Stormy Warren mm -hmm. has been the DJ on Sirius Radio uh, the morning, the whole morning, the, the highway, that channel, the highway. Mm -hmm. Do you guys listen to that? I, I'm not the, I'm half in and half out on country, but for you diehards, Stormy announced that he was leaving, and I used to go on his show because he's in Nashville, and I used to go down there just for fun, and he's a friend of mine, mm -hmm. and I think he liked that I don't really know that much about country music, <laughs> and I and I don't know. have a song to push, and no. something, I would go down there with nothing to plug. I don't, mm -hmm. he I was just his friend that bopped in and was funny. So, and then I it gave me truly love you, Stormy. But the second reason, which is almost a tie to the first reason of seeing, seeing Stormy, is he gave me a reason to day drink <laughs> and then be home before the children get downtown. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I was always back in an Uber by three o'clock. So, Stormy Warren and <laughs> yeah, the, no, yeah, PM. Uh -huh. Hello, not yeah. AM. St uh, Stormy Warren announced a partnership. Uh, on the big 615 tune-in radio station. Now, oh, if, sorry, yeah. it's a platform. So it's Garth Brooksy. Brooksy mm -hmm. Brooksy is yeah. doing this too. Cool. He's the one who got with Stormy. You like Garth? <coughs> I like Garth. Yeah. You love Trisha. Yeah. I like Trisha better. You like Trisha's cooking show. <laughs> I like her cooking show like nothing I've ever, and I don't even cook, and I'll never cook anything she cooks. I just can't believe someone makes that. Who puts chicken pot pie on a cheeseburger? <laughs> I mean, the shit that she would come up with. And you could tell they really eat it. Like, right. they're, you know, they're just normal looking people. And she'd be like, one of the things I loved growing up in Georgia was just taking a big old chicken pot pie and putting it right on top of a cheeseburger. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sometimes in the South, I don't know how everyone isn't in a diabetic coma all day. I don't, how are you eating this shit? But it looks so good, and I love chicken pot pie. Right. It's probably one of my favorite things. And I'm like, who? I, I, I don't think I'd put it. I don't like mix, mixing textures like that. But anyway, and <laughs> well, and I think Trisha has a better voice. I think Garth is a better entertainer. Mm -hmm. But if uh, one night at the Grand Old Opry, I forget why I was there. I certainly wasn't on my necessarily own accord. The, letter, the Loretta Lynn. Thing. Oh, I got hillbillied <laughs> by the Loretta Lynn thing. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> me and little Brian Dorfman. And then I was so sad because there was a big flood here. Uh, well, not. It's a ways from here, but in Tennessee. Me and Brian got put our seats because Dorf called and got them because he knows the people. Because there were no tickets left. Because uh, it said Loretta Lynn benefit for the flood victims. And I said, hey, do you want to go? I'm sidetracking here. I know that. Loretta Lynn and, and friends. Loretta Lynn and friends. Uh -huh. um, Stormy was the MC. And I said to <laughs> Dorf, yeah, Stormy MC, that show. I go, I've never seen Loretta Lynn. And I know she's old. And I think she had a stroke. But I think she's gotten better. I want to see her before she dies. Mm -hmm. Bucket list. He goes, me too. I've never seen her either. Well, we get there. Second performer, um, Luke Bryant, singing a song about having a beer on a pier, wishing you were here. And that's when I just roll my eyes and go, I, okay, I, I can't. These lyrics, I, okay, whatever, whatever. He's cute. Um, but then he said, I'd like to shout out to Miss Loretta, who's at home in wherever, Tennessee. I'm like, she's not here? <laughs> I got so hillbillied. The poster doesn't say Loretta Lynn's. Friends, it says Loretta Lynn and friends. And then on top, the I bought the poster. I went all in. Um, I love Loretta Lynn, and I'm never going to get, now she died. But anyway, the flood people, me and Brian's comp tickets were in the middle of all the flood victims. So everyone's crying. I'm like, this is the saddest show I've ever been to in my life, and it is not intentionally supposed to be sad. Anyway, Garth came out, mm -hmm. but so did Trisha. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. She's got a better voice. She did good. He, he's more of an exciting entertainer. I get it. And he's got all those hits and all that. I Whatever. can't wait to go to his bar. Yeah, I think his bar, I don't know if it's open here yet or not. I think you it was know, supposed to open. You know what he's, serving? he's serving Bud Light. Bud Light. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody, I'm not so going to go into Bud that Light. again, but anyway. <laughs> um, only, only Bud Light. <laughs> this is the new station in case you want. I never heard a tune in. It's You're on TuneIn. <coughs> I'm on TuneIn? The podcast is. The podcast is on yeah. TuneIn? Yeah. Huh. Wow. It's another place that don't make any money. <laughs> Put it on the list. Check. I mean, they should at least send me a six-pack once a year of beer from wherever they're located. Some gener yeah. generous thank you <laughs> about Christmas time. Really? Well, I don't even know what it is. I'll have to go look at that. Oh, boy. One month after his announcement that he was leaving his six-year partnership with Sirius XM... Uh, country music star Garth Brooks announced the Big 615. That's the area code in Nashville, in case you're wondering. The first of seven commercial for seven, seven, seven commercial free channels he'll launch on the streaming platform. Tune in via his seven sevens radio format. That's great. Yeah. He said uh, they're going to fill a void in the genre for classic first country fans. He said the fans are appreciate the modern genre, but they want to hear the latest from George Strait, followed by the latest from Luke Combs, and the latest from Ashley McBride. Followed by the ladies from the chicks. Oh, we throw the Dixie chicks out there. I don't want people mad about that. <laughs> but like chicks. <laughs> Garth, you're kind of sabotaging yourself in every press release. There's just no reason to include that. <laughs> just say Martina McBride. Say Ashley and Martina McBride. They're McBrides. Oh, and they're not even related. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He wants a lot of the old school stuff, which is great because that's the stuff I like better anyway because I'm old. Yep. They have over 80 million users. Well, look at TuneIn building a fan base, and I never even heard of it. Wait, Monthly active users and distribu um, distribution across 100,000 radio stations. Oh, my God. You, you get these emails from them. I get emails from TuneIn? <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I yeah, don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yes, they tell you how many people. I've never seen any of it. Congratulations to Stormy. Yeah, congrats to Stormy. And if he if it's located anywhere around here, I'll come and do it. I'm sure it's the 615. Yeah, but I think they want to play a lot of music. So we have two good send-off stories. Oh, my God. These are feel-good stories. Tune in. You so it's like an app? Yes. Oh. And then you put in Madigan's podcast. Okay, I'll go look at and it as soon are. as I'm done. Gonna be the first thing I do. <laughs> right after I go buy um, a cat brush that I saw on Instagram. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a fake out thing. Most everything I buy on Instagram somehow is not for reals. But yeah. I'm gonna try it. Lot of, lot of There's a lot of shedding going on here that doesn't need to be happening. A lot going 
lot going on out on my front porch. Your house has a flock. Yeah. <laughs> and then baby cat, yeah. They have too much white on them. Yeah, that's the problem. You can see it in the air in here. You could, I know. It's in the air. I know. It's on me. Yeah. I had to go to the dentist, get my tooth put re back in three times now. This one, the crown has fallen off. And I, ju- I looked at my shirt and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> I've turned into the cat lady. You have. Yeah, you but have. he doesn't say nothing because he's got a bunch of animals. Okay. <laughs> Ireland, my favorite place in the world, will pay you $90,000 to move to a beautiful island home. And it's one of the places I like most on earth. Okay. I don't think I qualify, though. First of all, I'm probably too old. This is a job for my cousin Joey and his wife Annalise. I'm sending all this information to them. They would love it, but I think she wants to be an actor, and this is not the place to try to be an actor because there's probably only 50 full-time residents, and most of them uh, drinky, drinky most of the timey, timey. She could be the theater. She could be the theater. Yeah, Joey, you could get out and promote it. You have the gift of that. CNN has your your back when it comes to your vacations. Uh, Wait, 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 wait. I... Irish Island Homes. New opportunities are afoot for those dreaming of fixing up a rural uh, uh, house far from the chaos of modern life. Now, off the west coast of Ireland, there's three, three islands. There might even be a tinier one. The Aran Islands is what they're called. Inishmore, Inish... Uh, Inish what? Yeah, Inish Killen. And then there's one that no, it's super tiny and nobody really goes to. Um, but I went out, Inish Sheeran. The Banshees of Inish Aaron was a big movie that people seem to like. I haven't seen it yet. Um, Inishmore's the biggest. Inishmore, I spent the night out there. That's where the Madigans have a hotel. It's the only hotel. Uh-huh. It's called Madigans. Yep. Um, Inishman. Inishman, that's tiny. Yep. And then Inish Sheeran. Inish Sheeran. Okay, so they're going to pay you. They have oh. a scheme to revitalize more than 20 of the idyllic islands that lie off its western seaboard. Um, whose breathtaking landscapes you might recognize from the Hollywood hit, the Banshees of Inishirin, as well as 10 Irish-speaking Celtic islands. Increased grants of up to 92000 would be offered to people willing to refurbish vacant or derelict homes and then live in them. But you don't own it. But who cares? Why would You don't want to live there forever. No. 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 In my mind, (laughs) I said to Lewis, because he went with me, I go, you know, I think if I'd have lived somewhere this quiet, I would have been a better student. He laughed so hard he almost fell out of the carriage, the horse (laughs) carriage thing. He goes, you're going to blame it on noise? (laughs) I was like, well, I don't know. If I I don't have anybody to talk to, I'll pay more attention. I'm social. I like people, most of them. You can't tell me there's a bar where people are talking about stuff and then want me to stay home and read Shakespeare. It's never going to happen. I'm going to the bar. Nobody cares about that. No. So um, would-be Islanders should be aware there are no restrictions on who can buy property in Ireland. Owning a piece doesn't, ga- although there are no restrictions, it doesn't gar- guarantee you the right to live there. The government website has the latest details on our living islands policy and the existent refurbishment scheme. I'm going to go read it. Okay. I want to know... But they always say they want young people, which I get. I mean, you don't want to deal with, and the, like the Blasket Islands, they told them in 19, it was like 1952, they gave them a warning yeah. and said, you can't live here anymore, it's not safe. Right. Just because the Atlantic Ocean in the winter is crazy. And a bunch of them said, for tough shit, we're not leaving. And they go, well, we're actually coming to get you then. Really? And you can go look in these old little, like, island stone cottages, and it's as if time stopped one day in 1952, oh my God. there's like a high chair with little baby food on it. Mm-hmm. Like, and no one has disturbed it. It's wow. extremely strange. Wow. Yeah, I, I think you could go a little crazy out there. Okay. I've read books about people who lived out there. Yeah. yeah. Well, and like my little horse guy that took us around, mm-hmm. he was one of 11 and he's the only one who stayed. Oh. And he's on Inishmore. Um, which is hopping compared to the other two. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, that just tells you, you know, but I think it could be fun for a couple years, and if the government will pay you, why not? Why not? If I was young, I would go do it. Mm-hmm. Now we're all going to learn how to be happy. What? Yep. I'm happy. I'm always happy, um, except um, at the airport. Yeah. 
I'm probably not the happiest person I could be. I'm not my best self. No. No. Who is? It's too much. Like, I think of my friend Dax right now. Then, so they rebooked their flight. It was supposed to go to Orlando. Cancel. You can go tomorrow at 4. He's in a band. He's got shit to do. And then um, they got a gig, right? And then, not that that's more important than other people, but he's going for work, not for pleasure. So then they rebooked to Fort Lauderdale, which would give you a three-hour drive to wherever they needed to go after Orlando. Then they, um, that's delayed for four hours. What? Yeah. I mean, it's just shit like that. I got to stop bitching about that. Normal people don't care. Um, because you don't have to do it every week, and I wouldn't care either. Um, <laughs> it takes a lot for you to show up. Um, Finland is the number one happiest country in the world. And here's... Were they number one last year? They were number one. We talked about it. But here's the meaning of life in five words. Oh, great. It's what they say. A Finnish philosopher and psychology researcher, people often, as one, uh, people often ask me, what is the meaning of life? The bigger question is, what isn't about some cosmic meaning of life? It's about how to find meaning in life. What makes, what makes life feel worthy and valuable to you? For six years in a row, Finland has ranked number one as the happiest country in the world. And having lived there my entire life, I learned that finding meaning in life boils down to five words. Make yourself meaningful to others. Well, the Catholics always tell you that. If you're depressed, go out and do something for somebody else. Because even socially, it will make you feel better. Right. You're useful. Yeah. You know, nobody likes a sad clown. No. Not that you can't be a sad clown sometimes. But you got to, like my dad would say, you, my, my, my dad would put like a thing on the refrigerator. This was terrible. You're allowed to cry for one hour. And then he put up a calendar of how long somebody was allowed to cry. If you broke up with somebody or he had different times for different things. Because otherwise you're going to get stuck in it and you're going to wallow and you won't be able to get out. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, uh, he's even monitoring your feelings. <laughs> yes, he controls our feeling time. Oh, that's great. Here's what you're supposed to do. Number one. Live for yourself, not for someone else's expectations. There tends to be less stat- status anxiety in Finland because people aren't so concerned about adhering to a rigid societal definition of success. That's what I like about Ireland, too. Nobody ever ask, has ever asked me what I did for a living. They ask me what you do for fun. Ever. Right. No one's ever, hey, how'd you make enough money to buy 12 Guinness? Don't you worry about that. <laughs> fun lady. <laughs> Uh, it can be hard to live with purpose if you're going through the motions, burned out, or filled with resentments because you're on a path that someone else picked for you. Even a meaningful job like being a doctor can be feel empty if your heart isn't in it. But before you can give it to someone else, you have to understand what makes you happy. Number two, become an expert and share your knowledge. That's where I might fail a little bit. <laughs> I know a lot about like Bigfoot, yeah. beagles, bass fishing. bass fishing. Yeah, it's things that aren't really... One of the best ways to serve others is find something that meets three requirements. You're good at it. Mm-hmm. It excites you. Gambling. Hello. I can take, teach Game gambling over. classes. Yes. Craps. I know all of it. And it has a positive impact on others. Well, that depends on if they win. <laughs> and that's on you. I'm not the one who bet red on roulette, am I? No. no. Once you find a job or hobby that makes you feel fulfilled, put all your focus into becoming an expert in it. Then share it with your community. Number three, practice rac- random, rac- uh, random, random acts of kindness. Yep. Number yeah. four, be yeah. a good neighbor. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah uh, some good neighbor. Talk ut is an old Finnish word that translates to working together to do something that one would not be able to do alone. In agricultural times, when someone had a big project at their farm, such as building a barn roof, they'd hold a talk ut. Neighbors would gather voluntarily and put in a day's work to help and then celebrate with food and drinks. The tradition comes... Carries on to this day. Last supper by the neighborhood spent an afternoon planting trees. That evening we set up tables and had, had a jolly, jolly, jolly Jolly evening with snacks and beverages. The kind of culture extends to why Finnish people often feel positively about civic duties like paying taxes. They see it as an essential hole for the good. Number five. Oh, this won't be hard for me. Well, (laughs) embrace quiet time together. I don't like quiet time. I like to talk. People don't need to be, make grand gestures or be a part of an important part of your life. Being together in silence is enough to make us feel connected and loved. That would be like torture for me. Yeah. To sit there with somebody I like. Yeah. yeah. And just go. Yeah. Just wait. How much longer till we feel something? You're not really a 
meditate. Can I talk yet? You're not really a meditator. No. 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 Um, this guy likes to go in the sauna. Well, yeah. If I get so hot and I was like, I want to get out the minute. I don't know. <laughs> the Finnish saying goes, speech is silver, but silence is gold. That's what the Finns recommend. That's your feel-good stories. Feel-good story there for your last one? It's kind of like a barn raising. Yeah, a barn raising. The Amish do it. No, the Canadian settlers did it. The Canadian settlers did it? Yeah, sort of probably the American ones. I don't know if the American ones did it. I think you'd have to know some Amish people. That's how my dad got the roof on the hunting cabin. I'm talking about the original settlers, not your dad. <laughs> my dad's an original settler in Decaturville, Missouri. <laughs> We didn't buy that land with shit on it, and there's stuff on it now. He, ha he has settled Decatur parts of Decaturville, and he's done it with meth heads right down the gravel road, right on down there. I know what them boys are up to. Oh, yeah, coming around the property on a horse with a gun. We're going to talk about Bucky's next week, speaking of Dolly. Well, Bucky's, the biggest one, has opened in Sevierville. It made it on the Today Show. Yeah, they've hacked the pubcast. But then a really cool termite on Twitter, Dylan, he said, should I write an article about this? See, somewhere in Annapolis, uh, I looked at his profile. And I said, yeah, I think you should. Yeah. I, I, yeah, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. And there was somebody that said, I don't think it was him, he was quoting something else of saying, it's the largest thing of junk food. Well, yeah, they do have junk food, but they also have fresh barbecue being made in front of your face. Uh -huh. Jerky, be is that junk food? I mean... Uh -huh. The fudge, I'm not into it. I'm not into chocolate like that, but homemade fudge, I guess that's... Junk food to me means potato chips, Cheetos, mm. stuff from a regular gas station. Bucky ball. This is like homemade comfort food from your grandma or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or your grandpa. And great Old-timey shit. Such good tea. Mm -hmm. Every time I see someone in public, I have a little Bucky on my carry-on, little stuffed Bucky keychain. And there was a guy in front of me in the escalator in Vegas. And I was in a line that was so long. I was like, this is horse shit. <laughs> and then I looked in front of me and there was a guy with a Bucky shirt on. And yeah. I'm like, that made me happy just for that one second. Yeah. Somebody else is a fan and he's not afraid to wear the merch. <laughs> <laughs> it's a giant beaver. <laughs> it is, it's a giant beaver. But they have some cool tie-dye ones and stuff. It looks like a dead head shirt. Yeah. yeah. I saw it's on. They have bathing suits. They have bathing suits. One pieces. Yeah, they go up to four times. Yeah. Four X. Yeah. yeah. I had a termite that was a four X and was very upset. And I'm not going to say that I may or not have done something about that. Yeah. Just now, if there's a lot of you four times are out there, I can't do it for everyone. This was just <laughs> seemed to be, and he wasn't even mad. He was just like disappointed. Yeah. And then I was like, ah, well, I'm sure I can call the children <laughs> and say, can we help this Abigail. situation out? Abigail. Yeah. We don't need to make a hundred. Just for this guy. Anyway. All right, termites. Where are you going on the I'm going to the... I'm going to the Ozarks right now. Matter of fact, like right now. Um, oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. We're moving um, things along there. Good. <laughs> <laughs> the 80-somethings are, are challenging. The 80-somethings are very challenging. And I don't think the people at, in, you know, hospitals and... Um, other places, when we say, can we have a few people, um, I don't think they meant 27 and a dog. <laughs> and in a room. <laughs> in one room. Ruff, 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 ruff. It's a Yorkie. Maggie's here. It, I can't even bark as high as her pitch. Ruff. That's it. Ruff. That almost hurts my vocal cords. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm going there. And then Borgata. Atlantic City, I think yeah. that's sold out, though. No, we dropped it. Oh, uh, and I'll drop some closer to the thing. At least I think I will. I may have already done that. Um, you already did it. Yeah. What's there is what's available. What's there is what's available. Oh, okay. There will be no marketing comps left. Maybe. Okay. We don't know until we get there. Um, and then I'm going to New Hampshire. Hampton Beach. Hampton Beach Ballroom Casino. Mm -hmm. And then... Highland. Right, the Cape Cod Medley Tent, the yes. gig I've wanted my whole entire life. And I don't even know why I want it. <clears throat> Just because people say it. I'm coming to that one. Um, and I'm going to go down to the water and look at it and know that I won't be getting in it because I think there's a lot of great sharks. I know for a fact. Shack. Um, and then the fall starts hardcore. Boise, so. we know her. She pits with 
what? Boise, Boise Reno, Hershey, Hershey Pittsburgh. Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Cleveland. Cleveland. I love all those places. Yep. I have friends in all those places, and they're all wonderful. All right, termites, that's it. It's summertime. It's getting hot, 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 hot. This right. Thursday in the Ozarks, it's going to be 103. That's I know it's ridiculous. And the kids are still going to want to go swimming. And I, I just can't. I can't. It's too hot. Yeah. I'm sending them alone. Drown. I can't go out there. They can all swim. They're fine. We got to congratulate LSU on the World Series. Did LSU win the College World Series? Yep. All my friend Kathy would be so happy. Yeah. Um, that's good because they were nationally embarrassed. I saw a lot of it in the airport and on the plane. It was yeah. like, yeah, to like 108 to 4. Yeah. yeah. Good for LSU. That's exciting for them. All right, termites. It's summertime. Stay cool, especially Texas, before your grid goes out. Get a generator. Get an Airbnb in Minnesota. <laughs> Look in Minnesota. If you can leave your job and work away from home, I think it's going to get real weird down there. Yeah. And I'm not a scientist. I'm just a lady with the weather channel. Do you have a generator? A generator? No. But my neighbor said I should get one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like buying things that are only usable in case of emergency. Because I think, yeah. This is the lady in a tornado. <laughs> <laughs> well, I learn tornadoes a lot. But, you know, the power goes out. It's fine. What am I doing that I need power? Right. I could walk around with candles and lighters and shit. It's fine. And a fan. I mean. <laughs> I held yeah, it might be bad in the winter, but when there's tornadoes, it's usually summer. I don't, I mean, it'll get hot, but I'm sure hotels have one. I'll just go to a hotel. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, termites, stay cool. Be good summer, termites. Night, night, termites.